Being a full-time content creator is so easy. All you have to do is post 4,500 times a day on TikTok, use a million hashtags, but then don't use hashtags, post on YouTube and Instagram and TikTok, but some of those platforms I think are dying, niche down and pick one topic, but then don't niche down and build a personal brand, post as much as you can high quality content, but then also a bunch of quantity of content. And then after all of that, you just get brand deals. Like it is so easy. <laughs> Being a full-time content creator and making a full-time salary from social media as an influencer or as a creator is not easy. I think this is one of the most gatekept and misunderstood industries, both because I do think there's an understanding that followers equal money, which is not true. So a lot of the time when people give you advice on like how to make money on social media, they're just telling you how to get a bunch of followers. So that is not the case at all. But then on the other hand, I also think one of the biggest misconceptions about being a full-time content creator is that it is oversaturated and that it's too late. Let me just start this off by saying it is not too late to become a full-time content creator, a full-time influencer. It is 2024. It is early. If anybody tells you it is oversaturated, think two things. First of all, what do people say about full-time influencers? What is the main vibe when you tell somebody, I'm a full-time influencer, I'm a full-time TikToker? people make fun of you. People think you're a big loser. And that is an amazing thing because it means it is still early. It's a new job. Also remember that there is only one of you. Yes, a million people can talk about fitness or a million people can talk about advice or confidence or anything. A million people could be vlogging their day, but there is only one of you. Your personality, your sense of humor, your perspective, your advice, things you've gone through, there is only one version of you. So regardless of if you're talking about something that a lot of other people are talking about, you're going to talk about it differently. So always think about you. What is different about you? Just in traditional marketing, if you're marketing like a skincare product, for example, there are so many skincare brands out there. But when you're looking at the shelf of all the different skincare, there are unique selling propositions for each little product. Some are for dry skin, some are acne prone skin. So what are your unique selling propositions about you? It's similar to selling a skincare product is position yourself as an influencer on social media, which is a whole other topic I can go into. Because if you know me, what one thing I could talk about forever is marketing and influencer marketing. But all that being said, today I want to teach you how you can actually make a full-time salary on social media. And today we're not only going to talk about brand deals because that's another big misconception. I think a lot of the times you think you can only make money from working with brands, which yes, it's, you can make a lot of money doing that. But there are so many other ways you can make an income and make a business and a brand for yourself that is sustainable and has multiple streams of income. And what it all really comes down to is your mindset, your identity on social media, so we're going to break that all down today. So today, the first thing we're going to talk about is reframing your mindset around how you view yourself on social media and how you view the market of content creation. Then we're going to break down the three different identities that you can have on social media, which each three of those identities have different income streams for each one. And then we're going to break down brand deals and how you can make money working with brands, media kits, rates, all of that. If you know me, you know, I've worked in influencer marketing and marketing for over seven years. I have seen hundreds of media kits. I've hired influencers full-time when I used to work at a skincare brand. I've also worked in traditional corporate marketing for so long. In preparation for this episode, I was doing some research on the current state of the influencer marketing industry. And last year in 2023, guess how much the influencer marketing industry was only in the US? Like guess how many dollars this market is worth? $26.09 billion was the influencer marketing industry last year in the US. Just to give you some perspective, the entire industry all across the world in 2016 was $1.7 billion. So in only seven years, we went from $1.7 billion to $26 billion alone in the US. That solidifies even more. It is not too late. The industry is growing and growing and growing every single year. Businesses and brands have never spent more on working with influencers. I also read in a recent study that businesses make six and a half dollars for every one dollar they spend on influencer marketing. So brands are making a lot of money from us as influencers. Also, if you are a smaller creator or if you're just getting started, this is some good news because nano influencers, so people under 10,000 followers, nano influencers have the highest engagement rate out of any kind of influencer. So brands would actually rather work with smaller creators right now because they have better engagement with their audience. So there's a lot of good news in the state of the influencer marketing world that we're going to talk about today. It's my favorite world to be in. So a lot of us are on the hunt right now to figure out how can we make a full-time income or part-time income, just money in general from social media. And today we're going to break it down. So let's get into it.
So we're going to start off by reframing your mindset about social media. This is something I have never seen before anybody else talk about. I've actually made a TikTok about this once. But this is the biggest revelation I came to a couple of years ago with social media influencing content creation entrepreneurship. And this has changed my income, my business, my identity on social media, everything for me. So I'm going to give it to you as well. So today what I want is for you to lift up your thinking that social media, you become an influencer, you work with brands. That's how you make your job. No, the secret formula to being a full-time content creator, a full-time influencer is creating a brand for yourself on social media that solves problems for specific audiences. It's very traditional marketing. So another way to think about this, and this is the revelation I came to, is that social media is a how, it's not a what. So you're probably thinking, Tess, what are you talking about? So what I mean by social media is a how and not a what is that if you're an influencer on social media, what you're trying to do is grow social media. That's the end goal. You post online, you create series, you create content to grow your following on social media. That's what you want to do. And a way to reframe your mindset that has really helped me is thinking that social media isn't what you want to do. It's how you do what you want to do. So for example, what I just said about creating a brand for yourself is you as a brand, social media side, what do you want to do? What do you want to help people with? Do you want to help post-grad students learn how to negotiate their salary, how to get a dream job? Do you want to help people become full-time content creators? Do you want to help people through toxic relationships? Do you want to help people learn how to glow up, how to be confident? Like, what do you want to do? So once you figure that out, one way how you do that is through content on social media, TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, Pinterest, whatever you want to do. One of the ways you help people feel confident is through content on social media. But this is where your mindset will start expanding when you think about yourself as a brand rather than an influencer. So let's break it down more. So what you want to do, for example, could be, okay, I want to help young girls feel confident. That's what I want to do. So how you do that one way is through social media. What are other ways you can help people do that through your brand? Another way you could do that is through one-on-one coffee chats virtually. Another way you could do that is through clothing or through digital journal or through a podcast or through hosting events. There are so many other ways how you can help young women feel confident. So let me break this down of how I do it. So for me personally, what I want to do is help people build their business, their content, their confidence, and just embrace the cringe along the way. So how I do that is through my personal content on social media, on TikTok, under my Sparkly brand, but also through my business, Busy Blooming. So through this podcast, through our events, through our Busy Blooming agency, through so many different ways that Busy Blooming does it. So what I'm trying to say is that if you want social media to be your full-time job, if you want to make a full-time income from this, try to think of social media as a how and not a what. One of the ways how you accomplish what you want to do is through social media content, but there are so many other ways you can do it. And the other ways that you do it are all different income streams for yourself. So how do you do this? Like, how do you take this mindset and put it into action? So what I did is I created a free little Google document template. I'll link it in the show notes or in the description if you're watching this on YouTube. And so what I've created is a free little business plan that you can fill out. That's really, really high level, very simple, but it helps you get your thought starters going of like, okay, what do I actually want to do? Who is it for? And like, what are all the different ways I can do this? So basically what you want to do you can also just do this in your notes app if you want or in a journal think about these five questions okay what do you want to do like big blue sky scenario what do you want to do what is your mission what is your purpose on social media what is your purpose of what your brand wants to do okay I'm going to stop us there for a second (laughs) because what I hear all the time is people saying well what I want to do is make money or what I want to do is have freedom of my time let me ask you a question okay Would you buy from a clothing brand if what they want to do, their mission of why they exist is to make money? No, probably not. Would you rather buy from a clothing brand if their business said, we exist to help women feel confident? We exist to help you feel comfortable in your sleepwear, for example. Like, yeah, you'd probably rather buy from that. It is not compelling. I'm just going to be completely honest. If why you want to start social media or why you want to start a business is to make money from it. Yes, it can definitely be a part of why for sure. Of course, we've all seen influencers become millionaires. Like we know it is possible to make money, which is not a bad thing. It can definitely be part of why you want to start, but it cannot be what you want to do because to be completely honest, I'm just trying to help. It is not going to be compelling for some they can probably feel your energy and tell you're only creating social media content to make money or to have freedom of your time. So take a step back and think, what do you want to do? How do you want people to feel when they watch your content? Maybe you want to be a lifestyle creator because you want to help people feel companionship. But what you want to do, and again, this is very traditional marketing, is businesses exist to solve problems, which I think really applies to content creators nowadays as well. Creators exist to solve problems for a specific audience. So what do you want to do is step one. Step number two, 
Who do you want to do it for? Who is your target audience? This doesn't have to be so specific. You might think I don't really have a target audience. It might not be as simple as like young women. For me, my target audience is content creators, entrepreneurs, and people that do it as a side hustle. That's who I talk to. But it does not have to be that specific. Instead of thinking about the demographic, think about the types of problems people have. What kind of problems do the people have that you want to talk to? Do you want to talk to people who struggle with always comparing themselves to everybody, who always struggle with getting into toxic relationships? Think about who do you want to help, like demographic wise, and or what kind of problems do people have that you want to target? Step three is the content. If you want to do social media content, which you probably do, if you clicked on this video, it was what kind of content do you want to create about this? What platform? What style? This is a content strategy, this third piece, which content strategy is my bread and butter. It's what I love to do. I did over 400 content strategy one-on-ones last year. It was so fun. And so content strategy is a whole other deep dive that we can go into in another episode. Keep, but keep it really high level. Like what platform do you want to create on? What platform do you think is the easiest for you? And if you want to go deeper into content strategy, let me know. I could do a whole episode on that. And the last two points are other ways of how you could accomplish what you want to do that's not content creation. So first of all, think about what are ways that you can do this through passive income or through products. So through digital downloads, apparel. Passive income is ultimately just setting up a system that creates money and works without you, like digital downloads, stores, things like that. And then finally, what are ways that you can do this through active income? If you want to do that, you don't have to obviously do any of this, but if you want to do one-on-one chats, coffee chats, consulting, events, anything like that. So what this does when you start to work through this business plan, we start to work through this mindset is that it elevates and lifts up your mindset around social media because it makes your thinking more macro instead of micro thinking all the time of how can I get more followers? How can I go viral? How can I get as many views as possible? And thinking of, okay, I'm a brand. Here's what I want to do. Here's my mission. Here's who I want to do it for. Social media is a piece of that, but there are so many other ways that I can do it. Okay, next we're going to talk about the three different ways that you can use social media to make an income, to build your business, depending on which one of these identities that you want to do. So the first way that you can use social media is through being an influencer and being a content creator. The second way is through being an entrepreneur. And the third way is through doing both. So each three of these identities on social media do different things and make money in different ways. The way that an influencer makes money is different than the way an entrepreneur makes money, but they both use social media. So first, let's start with influencers and content creators. You might be thinking, what is the difference between an influencer and a content creator? I have a definition and I think I might do a whole other episode deep diving into each one, but... The way I view them is different than I think the standard definition, but I think this might help you. This is how I define them. So being an influencer versus being a content creator, the first way you could kind of make money on social media is that being an influencer is inward focused content. It's inward focus about your life, your opinions, your day, your outfits, your recommendations. It's really you are the center of your brand, which is a beautiful thing. Being a content creator is outward focused content tips, advice, guides, starter packs. It's all outward focused content towards the viewer. So that's another thing to think about for yourself. What do you want to do? Maybe it's a little bit of both. I personally like the mix between both. So the ways that influencers make money and content creators make money in social media is really through two ways. It's through brand deals on social media and through AdSense. The next way, the next person you can be on social media is an entrepreneur. And so how entrepreneurs make money on social media is through using social media to grow their business. Biggest difference between these two people is that what influencers are trying to do is grow social media to make money, to make brand deals, to make AdSense. And what entrepreneurs are trying to do is use social media to grow their business. So they're growing social media, but that's not the end goal. They're using social media to grow their business and make money off their business. The third way you can use social media is to do both, which is again, what I like to do. You can have your own business, whatever you wanna do, use social media to grow that, and also be a content creator and an influencer and make money off of brand deals. For me personally, this is how my income and business works. I work with lots of brands on TikTok and Instagram doing content creation and brand deals with them. And then my business also makes an income from my business, Busy Blooming. So I use social media for both, to grow Busy Blooming, to grow this podcast, our events, everything, but also to grow my social media. So that's another thought exercise you could do is think about, okay, do I want to be an influencer? Do I want to be a content creator? What am I trying to use social media to grow? How do I want to make money? Like, do I want to make money off brand deals, off YouTube AdSense? Do I want to make money off of my business that I have? Maybe some apparel, maybe sort of brand. How do I want to make money? Like, do I want to use social media to grow social media? Or do I want to use social media to grow a business that I want to start? Or do I want to do both? 
okay, that was a lot about our mindset, reframing it. Social media is a how, what's on a what, what do you want to do? Who do you want to do it for? Create a business plan. There's a lot in there, but this ideology, I guess, about social media and influencer marketing, content creation, entrepreneurship, it's a way of viewing it that expands your mindset and helps you realize there's a lot of opportunity of ways that you can help people and create a sustainable brand with lots of different things going on under it. I think it's time now to talk about brand deals and influencer money. I will be doing a whole episode on brand deals, media kits, rates, all of that, because it definitely needs a whole episode on its own. And I really want to break down how much I have made on social media from brand deals, how much I charge at different follower accounts on TikTok. And like I said at the beginning of this episode, I've done both. I've been on both sides, hiring influencers, looking at their media kits, all of that, and also doing that myself on the other side of it. But for today's episode, if you do really want to hone in on the influencer side, on the content creator side, there are some things that I think will really help you. So brand deals are the number one way that influencers make money. Yes, you can make a lot of income from AdSense on YouTube, from the creator fund on TikTok, if you're in the US, unlike myself. Brand deals are most of the time the number one income stream for influencers and content creators on social media. For me personally, I worked with about 20 brands on TikTok last year, and I started making similar to my old corporate salary on TikTok when I had about 30,000 followers. In my opinion, the best way to go about brand deals is to think about the influencer marketing team on the side of the brand. So how this works is that as an influencer marketing manager, you get assigned a budget for the year. So let's say, say for example, you work in a clothing brand. They say, okay, you have $5,000 for this quarter or this year to work with influencers. Every single brand has a different budget. And so you will find as a creator that brands will reach out to you, big brands, small brands, and medium size, all have different budgets. You might even find, which is what I find a lot of the time, medium sized brands, smaller brands sometimes have a bigger budget than big brands because bigger brands oftentimes do a lot of gifted product, a lot of gifted campaigns, things like that, where they just give you the product and that's it. They don't have a budget because people are so excited to work with them. So the first point I want to make is that every single brand has a different budget. So getting back in the mindset of an influencer marketing manager, when they reach out to you or you reach out to them for a campaign, which I will talk about more, they will probably email you and say, hey, we would love to work with you. What are your rates? So you have two options here. Option number one is you can say, can you let me know the budget first, which a lot of people give that advice. Option two is you just hand over your rates. If you go for option one and you ask them for their budget, 99% of the time, they will not give it to you. Or in my opinion, they probably shouldn't really give it to you because they are losing all their negotiation power as a brand. Option two is you probably will have to give over your rate card. When you give over your rate card of how much you charge for what they're looking for, a TikTok, a YouTube video, an Instagram post, the offer that they give you is lower than what they have. And of course, this makes sense because say, for example, they have been told, okay, you have $500 for TikTok. So find an influencer that can charge $500. So as an influencer marketing manager reaching out to a creator, they're not going to offer you $500. That's their max budget. They're probably going to offer you 300, something like that. So they have a little bit of negotiation room when you negotiate back. It's just like negotiating your salary. They always give you the lowest offer that they have because they're expecting you to negotiate. So how it works. So a brand will reach out, ask you for your rates. You give your rate card, you negotiate back and forth. You get to a price or you don't. If you do, you get the contract and then you do the brand deal. I will go into way more detail in a future episode. I have so many videos on my TikTok as well of how to set your rates, how much to charge, all of that. You might be thinking, okay, but how do I get brand deals? Like how do I get brands to reach out to me? How do I reach out to them? There are two ways that brand deals happen. Actually three, I guess. The first way is the brand reaches out to you and asks you if you want to work with them. The second way is you reach out to brands, you do a bunch of pitching, a bunch of emailing, DMing, and ask them if they want to work with you. The third option is you have a manager who gets brand deals for you, which I will talk about more in an upcoming episode. In my opinion, I made a TikTok about this, I think about a year ago, and somebody stitched it and I got a lot of negativity when I said this on TikTok, but I stand by what I said is that as a content creator, especially if this is not your full-time job right now, you only have so much time in a day. Like you don't have all day, every day to just like email brands, make content, do a bunch of things. 
it can be very overwhelming building up content creation when you have a lot of other things going on in your life. So in my opinion, it is always important to prioritize high ROI tasks as a creator, things that have a very high return on investment of your time. One of the biggest high ROI tasks is making content, making high quality content. But there are so many other tasks you can do, like email brand, update your channel banner, reach out to other creators. All There's so many other like tasks you can always be doing as a content creator. But in my opinion, if you do not have time to cold email brands all the time, DM brands all the time, it doesn't really matter because 90% of the time, probably more, brand deals are inbound. When you see a content creator working with a brand, that was probably an inbound brand deal. All that being said, and what people were saying when they were stitching my video on TikTok is that it's not true. You can email brands and they will still want to work with you. Like it does work. Of course, it does definitely work that if you email brands, you have a really good pitch email, which I can talk about more as well. If you email them, DM them, they might want to work with you. Or if they don't have a campaign coming up right now, down the line a year later, if when they do have a campaign, they might think of you because you emailed them. So it does work. It can work. But most of the time, it's inbound brand deals. So in my opinion, the best thing to do as a content creator, especially if you're tight on time, is just focus on creating content, interacting with your following, like just building your business plan, all of that, and set yourself up for success. So always have your email in your bio, create high quality content with brands you want to work with, tag brands all the time in your content, but just trust the process that it takes a long, long time to get brand deals, years usually to get your first one. And that's okay. It's completely normal. And again, brand deals are not the only way you can make money as a content creator. There's all the other things that we talked about earlier in this episode. In terms of media kits, I have so many TikTok videos on this, but I do have two $5 media kits linked down below if you want to check those out. But if you don't, there's so many free templates on Canva and media kits at the end of the day just need to show a brand what they can't see. They need to show a brand, your demographic, a little paragraph about your audience, why you create content, what you're trying to do, link some examples of videos that you've worked with brands in the past. If you've never had brand deals, just link some videos where you talk about products in a really specific way. What you really want to show them is what they cannot see when they look at your account. And they also want to see really what they'd be buying from you. So try to just show a couple examples of like product based or like vlog lifestyle content. That quickly covers brand deals. The second way that creators make money is through AdSense. So through AdSense on YouTube or through AdSense on podcasts. This is why the strategy in terms of content strategy, which is what I usually recommend with newer creators, is to have one short form platform and one long form platform. TikTok and YouTube, Instagram and a podcast. Diversifying your content platforms of one short form and one long form diversifies your potential income streams. Yes, on YouTube and podcasting, it can take quite a while to get monetized, to get enough listens to be monetized on podcasts. Or if you are, I keep forgetting with the creator fund because I'm in Toronto, but there is a creator fund on TikTok where if you've been on TikTok lately, people are making a lot of money from this creator fund. So if you're in the US, check it out. But that's another way you can make AdSense, like passive income just based on your views and analytics of your content. Okay, that was a lot. We talked about how to reframe your mindset around content creation, social media. It's a how, it's not the what all the different ways you can build a business and a brand for yourself and how to do it. And a little bit of a deep dive into brand deals, influencer marketing, how it all works behind the scenes. And I hope this video was helpful. Social media just has so many doors you can open of how you can build a business, a brand, of course, as a content creator, but also just in more ways for yourself. That being said, what I will say is having multiple things going on. And if you have followed me for a while, you know, this is something I really struggled with when I first started is that it can feel very overwhelming to have a podcast, to have a TikTok, to have one on ones, to have like apparel, have a million things going on. It can can be very overwhelming. And so in those moments, if there's so many things you want to do, you don't know like what order to do them in, just create a really clear brand or business plan for yourself of what you want to do, who you want to do it for, all the different ideas of how you can accomplish what you want to do, and just start doing one by one. So you can slowly start bringing them all into your business and your brand. Okay, that's everything I wanted to say. Thank you so much for listening, so much for watching. I hope you're doing well. If you have any questions, my DMs are always open, as you probably know. So DM me, ask me any questions, comment below in this video and stay tuned for an upcoming video deep diving into brand deals and rates and all of that which I'm really excited about but I hope you're having a good start to your week and I'll see you guys next Monday bye